I'm Chris Reynolds. I'm a guitar maker and I repair guitars. Um, I came into possession via eBay of a 1959 Stratotone uh, Harmony guitar, which was in a very bad state. It had a broken headstock and the pickups, one of them had no coils in whatsoever. So I ended up having to rewind the pickups. The winder I ordered to do the job was stolen from my doorstep. I really like the guitar, but it's made of really bad materials. It's made of plywood and lemon wood. It survived all these years because somebody loved it and because it had redeeming characteristics. Um, whilst waiting for the winder, I thought to myself, well, why don't I just crack on and make a copy of it? But instead of just making a straight copy of it, I'll make a copy with decent materials and try to reimagine the guitar a little bit as, as if it was made as a quality instrument rather than a sort of Woolworths guitar or a Sears and Roebuck guitar. And this is the story of how that happened. And um, it's the first time I've ever documented uh, me making guitar in total uh, from start to finish. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope it's the sort of video that I would like to watch, and I do watch a lot of them. Um, here it comes. 1959 Harmony Stratosone. Nice, nice guitar. So I started, this is the, the top of the guitar. This is across, across this part of the guitar here. So basically that, I've made that, and here it is. It's just made of scraps of guitar bodies, which I've made before and I'm going to bandsaw out the shape. It's a great guitar, but it's not a great guitar. The pickups are another story. We'll do that. Let me cut that out now. I uh, didn't have enough stock big enough to actually do it in one piece. I must have 10 or 15 of these blocks just knocking around, so I just glued a few together and bandsawed out uh, the shape and uh, just cut it slightly small around the bits that I know that the sides are going to go on. I've taken some uh, mahogany guitar sides and I've made myself, made myself a couple of uh, strips to go on the side. These will actually form the side of the guitar, so they'll be bent around the edges, which here actually were some sort of maple or lemon wood or some sort of cheap maple type wood, which uh, I stained mahogany. But you can see there's actually a joint here where the block, which is this block, has actually got a little joint here. And what I'm gonna do is I'll, uh, I'll work up to that with the sides and then for the rest of the curve of the cutaway, that will be taken up by the solid block into which I shall cut the neck pocket. Uh, so what I've done here is taken uh, what was some very cheap guitar sides, which I bought just to sort of experiment with and practice with, but I've cut it down to size, slightly oversized depth of the guitar. Everything you make oversized until you chop it back. Making it underside just calls grief. The only other thing I've actually chopped so far is I have made a block that will go in the body. This is a template, by the way. This is not the body bottom. I should be making that out of a piece of mahogany. So that will go there. That will that will hold the bridge so that the bridge won't squash the box of the body. I was just going to keep sanding these sides until they're about, I don't know, two mil, two millimeter. Nothing two mil do. So we're nearly there. Nearly there with this. I think this is enough. I mean, two millimeters, I mean, it's nice and, it's nice and bendy. I've got to bend this, probably not more, not much more than that at a maximum bend, and I'm doing that dry. What you don't want is any structural pressure being placed on the top or the back of the guitar. So this will hold the sides together. It'll literally be a block like that. I mean, I could use this block, but I've already cut this for the other bit. So a block that will go there is all I'm cutting there. And I think that will be the end of the major block work in this, uh, in this build. I've just taken this block of wood which I cut on the bandsaw and I have clamped it to the top of the guitar, actually clamped it to that side like that and then I traced off the curve because I need this block at the bottom of the guitar. I don't know how thick it's going to be yet, as I say I'm making this build up as I go along. Uh, there's no plans for this, it's literally look at the guitar hanging up there and then work out how it's constructed, cut the bits you think are required by putting your hands inside it and looking inside the body and then just, uh, we're busking, that's what we're doing, we're busking. That's 
round it off just to get a nice little angle on it. Let's put that back on the template. Just we're going to bring it in a bit because there's going to be sides on there. Probably just round off the ends, give it a nice shape. At the end of the day, what will happen is that these pieces will, the sides will bend up against it, like that. Mahogany wood shavings on the floor, or Moranti, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you can see that I've now thicknessed the uh, the other side. This is, you know, they're both about the same thickness now. And the easiest way to tell that is actually with your fingers, just put them side by side, put your finger on it. And if it feels about the same thickness, it probably is. That, unfortunately, is still setting, so I can't get that out and balance it all up for you. But uh, the next job I think we're gonna find is to make the back at the front of the guitar. Today we're doing the back, um, the back of the guitar, made out of um, mahogany. You've just got to take those two pieces and match them. There's a variety of ways of doing it. It's probably about four mils thick at the moment, and I'm probably not going to thin them down too much. But what I have done is done the joint, which is means making this absolutely flat and true. As you can see, pretty much it works. Uh, it's done by planing, and what I use is a shooting board. This is my shooting board. Basically, you put the two pieces together in a sort of butterfly, so the butterfly faces are inwards, uh, the, up, the up faces are inwards, and then you get yourself a really good, sharp, super sharp plane, and you lay it on its side like this, on the shooting board, running up the side of the back, and um, get that wonderful right angle and the perfect joint. Of course you will. So, backs two, put glue on one side, the best glue in the world, tight bond, I don't want to get too much on there, otherwise you get tons of squeed out and you spend all day cleaning up. And then that's it really. Look at that. Nice little fillet down there. Hopefully we've got no gaps. Sufficient glue but not too much. Um, use a spreader. I find the best spreader is a finger. And uh, it means you can shape it actually. I try and shape it into a little point on the top just by, uh, I don't know why feels professional. Uh, it means you can redistribute it as well just by just by, uh, just by scraping the edge of your finger off. You can stick it where you want. And then that's there. Grab a bit of paper and um, glue it onto a bit of paper otherwise you'll have devil's own job trying to get this off the uh, work surface afterwards. Um, make sure that there's enough glue there. Move it backwards and forwards just to move it all around it. Squish it all of that. And let's get some. Make sure there's backing paper behind all of it. Um, push down, squidge it along. Clamp time. Clamp time. Now that is perfect because it's flat and heavy. Gluing time, waiting time, time for lunch. I've uh, just taken some wood out, which I've had for ages, which I was going to use for an acoustic, just here. And uh, as you can probably see, it's uh, got water damage on it by the looks of it. So what we're going to do is try and clean it up first, otherwise there's no point in going much further with it. Or I'll stain it. There's an idea. Oh, uh, we'll do something with it. I'm sure we can salvage it. The thing is, the original guitar was actually made of plywood. So, you know, whatever we do here has got to be an improvement on that. At least it's symmetrical. So, you know, who knows? We'll give it a go at cleaning up. I'm just using a bit of a sandpaper block here just to begin with. And actually... No, that doesn't look very good. Let's try clamping it down. Scrapers, cabinet scrapers. I didn't know how to use one of these till I went to college. And uh, when you've used one, these things, just hold them at an angle, hold them at an angle, sharp side down. Uh, they, you know, they're so sharp. Uh, basically, they're a, they're a plane, but just the blade. Um, let's see what we can do. Okay. 
So after a little bit of thinking and a bit of looking, uh, this piece of wood is unfortunately uh, maybe suffered water damage, but I think it's more likely it's actually suffered from some mildew and some mould, and that coloration is actually right into the wood. I think I can just about get around it by moving the uh, <coughs> just moving the template up the piece of wood away from the damage, and I think I've got enough wood to do that. So let's let's go and have a look. I think there's enough space there. Certainly enough space here. I think. So if we give ourselves that about half an inch to a centimetre, whatever that would be to you. Um, yeah, we'll draw around that and we'll use that as our template. In fact, I might just chop this piece off and try and save that. Things have moved on a bit, a bit of a pace. Um, I've chopped out the, uh, the shape of the body. So there you go, that's the, that's the back all cut out. I've glued the blocks on that uh, I made before. Sorry, I don't know that. Thank you, Alexa. Didn't ask you, but she doesn't know that, apparently. I've got a small gap here for the, uh, for the sides, which I shall bend tomorrow, to go around there. So there'll be one side that will go around here. Um, I had to chop this out because I realised when I put my hand inside the body that there's actually a switch uh, going to have to go into the body there and uh, going to need some space in the body for the switch to go. So that's all glued on, that's a solid block, just like the original, that's the way it is. And then uh, the top will go on top of that, this is the template. I'll just balance the template, so the template is pretending to be the top. So that will be basically how the body works. This bit will be solid, although this will have veneer on it, this won't. And then where that little lip is, the veneer will start there. And then the veneer will go around the side and meet at the back. And that's lined up, yeah, we'll meet at the back like that. And the same with the top side, all the way around. And go all the way to this edge here, straight past here, all the way to here. Uh, and then this will be left as wood and I'll just stain all that to match, hopefully, or roughly match or look, look reasonable. Where that, that dark meets light here, that's where the, uh, the block, which is this bit here, the block actually ends there and the veneer starts here and then goes down around the rest of the body. You'll have to drill that at some point. Definitely making progress. What I've also done is scraped and glued the top. So the top is now setting. I think you can see there's a drawing on the top of there. It's just a few lines. That will be the spruce top. So the original guitar was plywood. Even the sides were ply, and the front was plywood too. So this is a, basically a plywood guitar. What we're trying to do is up the game a bit here and make it out of better woods. And I hate those block inlays. I don't know what it is about block inlays. The headstock I just don't like. I think I'll just do something a little bit more tasteful. Similar but tasteful, hopefully. That's the idea. Maybe I'll even put some pickups in it. <laughs> well, we've got the top uh, sorted. Although we've got some coloration down the middle, I don't think it's drastic. By the time it's stained, I think that'll probably disappear. Time to cut that out, I think. We've cut this out. That's all cut out, that's the inside. Do you remember this mark? Well, we managed to hide that by book matching it with the other side, which is not ideal because they're actually cut to be open like a sandwich. But in this case, we got lucky and uh, the, uh, the inside was pretty good. So that's all uh, cut out. The blocks are in position. I haven't positioned the central block, which is going to be for the uh, for the bridge. I haven't put that bridge support in yet because I haven't finally decided on the scale length of this guitar quite yet. Top is all cut. There's the top, and that will sit on there. And obviously, tomorrow's big job is going to be to bend the ribs or the sides, depending on what you want to call them. They've got to be bent so that they go all around the side of the guitar. Following the contours, and we're probably going to have to work out some jig and clamp mechanism to hold them in position A whilst they set. But that'll be tomorrow's fun. Uh, we'll get the bending iron out. Also tomorrow, I think we'll have to start uh, making the neck. And the debate will start in my mind tonight as to whether it will be mahogany, whether it will be walnut, or whether it will be maple. All right, I will get back to you tomorrow. Goodbye.